All right, guys, I'm in the uh, the thick of it. If you can't tell, uh, there's my 4.6 engine harness. Um, I got the coyote in there. Got things uh, kind of mocked up. I still got to trim hoses and um, replacing that reservoir. And I might pull the fuse box out of here. I'm not sure. Probably not, actually. Um, but um, I've moved on um, to wiring. <sighs> so, I've got the control pack here. Um, if you have basic wiring knowledge, you can probably figure this out. Um, you got your alternator and your mass airflow. Um, they are kind of off on their own there. Um, they're off on their own there. They got their own length there because they go to the engine bay. And then this, these two plug into the PCM. And then this plugs into the, this harness that's in line uh, of the Coyote engine harness. And then you just got some blunt leads for the cooling fan power and ground. And moving on, you come on down here and you got O2 sensors and a starter solenoid feed. And then you come on down and this one really needs to be in the cabin of the car. Um, so, you got, this is the throttle pedal, your gas pedal. This is a clutch bottom switch. I'm probably not gonna use that. Um, and then this is, called inline to ignition pigtail. Um, I'll show you that here in just a second. There's a little pigtail with like four wires on it. Um, you gotta wire those up. And then coming on down, um, this is your um, OBD2 port for check engine light. Um, so you can monitor your engine. And then these, I don't think I'm gonna use any of these. Um, this is for uh, vehicle speed sensor, signal in, signal out, and then you got a ground for the speed dial and uh, power for the speed dial. And I don't think I need any of that. And then at the end of this uh, whole mess, you got your control pack fuse box. And then, um, a ground for it yeah there's a ground there um and then coming over here um this is the inline pigtail um it's got let's see if i can remember fuel pump wire a starter motor request ignition relay trigger and then there's one more i can't remember what it is and then this is a fuse that you have to um install uh, but that's pretty much the control pack. Uh, I mean, it, it seems so intimidating, but uh, when you look at it, you consider everything else we're doing. Um, this is one of the easier parts. Uh, see if I can put my fuse box in the glove box. Because one, who uses the glove box? I mean, if you, I understand if this is like gonna be somebody's daily driver or something, but this is my garage queen, so I think it'd be dope if, ew, what is, oh, it's grease from where I greased it, so it would move better. Um, uh, this, uh, so my fan wasn't working, um, so I put my fan on a switch so I can turn it on. Um, and then this is for some lights uh, that I have rigged up under there. But um, essentially, I want to put my fuse box, like, literally right here. I might just cut all that stuff out, what I don't need, and, like, leave these pegs so I can, like, mount the box down. Um, but I'm looking behind here because... If I do put it in here, I need to feed all the wires through somewhere, and I think that grommet is right there where I gotta feed them through, so I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, so the SN95 uh, ain't nothing like the new Edge. Um, oops. There's no way in hell. Uh, I ain't even gonna open the glove box again. There's no way in hell um, to get 
anything through there. Um, for some reason, my car is different than the other ones I've done. The heater box on mine is fucking... I mean, it, there's like a half an inch of space to get... Uh, I can't even get my fingers to the hole. I can't even get it near the hole. I can't fish this through. I can't do nothing. So, um, I was looking at the um, control pack harness. See, I've got it in the car. And I decided, um, you know, I'm a, I want the, I want it in here. Um, and the first things that come off of the fuse box are oxygen sensors. So why wouldn't I just run it down the trans channel straight to the oxygen sensors, leave all the stuff that's supposed to be in the cab in the cab, and then run the rest of the harness to the front of the car? It seems like a no-brainer. I just got to make sure I put it down through the trans tunnel in a way to where it's not ever going to get like messed up. But yeah, that's the plan. I've wasted like four and a half hours trying to figure out how I want to run the control pack. And I finally decided I want to put the PCM in the firewall um, because I was going to put the fuse box in here um which i'm still gonna do it's a mess um but um, what i did was i fed everything down through this slot and then i got it running right here and then you see i've got a 5 8 heater ho uh, well i cut a little notch right here um to give me the same amount of clearance that it had before this harness was here, you know what I mean? And then I put this 5 8 heater hose here and um, <clears throat> I filed down all the sharp edges. Um, now I'm just um, about to wrap this heat stuff um, on the harness that runs up through here i ran it into here because my plan was originally to have the pcm on this bracket and um run the harness the way i wanted through this grommet and um then come up here and plug into the pcm like i did the last car but I think that the control pack's different for the Gen 1 because it just isn't going to work that way. Um, I, no matter how much I stretch and pulled, it was still like two foot short to do it that way. Um, I wish I could have ran it through that grommet uh, like I did on the other swap, but it's just not possible. Um, I, unless I pull my dash and pull the heater core and the whole fan system and all that, it ain't happening. Um, the way I cut that grommet made it to where I can put it right back. So that's cool. Um, I didn't want to lose that. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I've been doing for like four hours is just like fishing harnesses through different ways and shit like that. Um, so essentially, you're not gonna have to see any of the, all of the control packs gonna be out of sight. The only parts you're going to see is right here because even the MAF and the alternator, um, they are, uh, they come through, uh, through the trans tunnel and then come through here, um, and up over this. And I think I'm going to make like, uh, I'm going to go up over all this stuff. It's all tangled right now. But I think I'm probably going to make a little bracket to put it right next to, hold it right next to the brake lines. And then we'll run our um, mass airflow plug. And we'll run the alternator plug. So, going to be tapping into these wires underneath here. Um, I need a starter request and an ignition relay. Um, so for the starter, it's going to be um, that pink wire or the white wire with the pink stripe that you see there. Um, 
and then it's weird uh, because there's actually like three or four wires in here that are hot for start and run. Um, the tan and white one you see there, the brown and yellow, and that thick yellow one, they're all um, hot um, for start and run, and they don't lose signal. So I'm probably going to um, tap either the tan one or the brown one, um, and then I'll be done under the dash. I can put this panel back up under there. All right, guys, I figured I'd catch you up because I've just been doing a bunch of busy work. It's not really stuff that you can see. I've just been like trimming and hiding and stuff. So um, I got all of my um, 12 volt wires ran to the battery, the starter, the alternator and the fuse box. And then I just got to do uh, wherever that thing is, uh, the last fuse box or the last fuse, uh, I'm gonna, I have the fuse box in the cabin, so I'm gonna put that in the cabin as well. Um, I took care of um, the grounds. I put the grounds over here because I already had a uh, amp wire ran to the trunk. So I just converted this to a ground. Um, and that harness that like usually grounds on the battery and grounds to the firewall and then plugs into these grounds down here. I just fished all of that through here and just kind of hooked it up. I'm gonna, you know, probably shorten this or zip tie it. And then I have another, one of these grounds jumping off and it goes back here. And um, I have the engine block grounded by itself right here. Um, I took the paint off uh, first of course and then um this wrapped wire over here goes to the ground on that's right at the end of the engine harness and then there's also another ground right here on the engine harness so um i added more wire and wrapped them together um here's the other ground so these two grounds connect into one ground and then they go down there to that battery ground um and then I got the battery back here. Um, I'm not haven't really done anything yet, but I got my cores and everything ran. Um, I got my fuel pump wire hooked up. You might not even be able to see that, but essentially I ran the fuel pump wire back here. Um, I don't have my flashlight, but um, yeah, I plugged up the pigtail for in the cabin and ran the fuel pump wire i still got to hook up the starter request and the ignition relay and then plug up the gas pedal um and uh yeah so i i, I have uh you know i'm real particular about stuff and i have adhd so i kind of like do everything at once and i jump around a lot um so I've been working on fuel lines over here. When I work on something for too long, I get bored and I just jump to something else. But I'm doing my um, fuel lines like a new edge because, let me explain this. Um, the AN adapters will not go on these hard lines. My Cobra hard lines have an extra nipple down here and the AN fittings are not made to go over that so i can't put am fittings here so these lines are gonna go probably i gotta like hide them or cover i don't know i gotta get them to where they can't be seen because they're not gonna be used there's gonna be one fuel line that comes up and goes to the fuel rail that's it um so and then oh yeah i don't know if, yeah last night when i worked my phone was dead so that's the 12 volt that goes all the way back to the trunk um this grommet here is a factory grommet. It was just there. I guess they left it there in case you'd need to do something like this, but I just cut out the grommet and ran it down there. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to working on my um, fuel lines. Um, I'm just making, I'm doing it like a, a new edge system. So I'm just making two short sections that go to the fuel filter and regulator, and then one fuel line that goes all the way to the front, um, straight to the fuel rail. So yeah. Hey guys, um, so 
Coming up on the end of the third week of working on this at night, and I'm about to try to test start it. I have everything hooked up, not cleanly. I got like most of it. The only thing I don't have hooked up like how I want it in the end is my engine harness. I have it plugged up and then ran to the sensors because I just want to make sure that my tack and everything's going to work before I gut that harness. Um, because I might end up having to send it off or something. Um, but I got everything plugged up. I got the fuel system. Uh, I got my intake in the mail today. Um, and it turned out perfect. I wanted the filter and the fender. And what I bought made it to where you have to put this pipe on. And then you have to install the filter from inside the fender. Because the filter won't fit through that hole. So you have to install it from the backside. So it's exactly like a fender well cold air intake. All it is is a uh, an $80 Amazon cold air intake and uh, like $10 Amazon 45 degree elbow. That's it. Um, the main piece of the intake then I did the 45 degree elbow and then there's a metal 45 that comes with this kit that's a pie cut metal 45 but it's short and uh, so i have this this ran and then into the 45 that kind of like is sideways and turns this way and then the last 45 tilts it up enough to where it goes straight into the fender it worked out i couldn't have asked but i couldn't have asked for it to work out better um the only thing i have left i'm waiting on my an hoses so that i can um run this p run my catch can with a n lines um so i just got a 5 a teeter hose on there as a temporary fix um so i guess i'm I, I put about five gallons of gas in the gas tank i haven't picked the gas tank back up and put it back under the car because i want to make sure that none of my AN connections are leaking, which I really don't think they are, but um, doesn't hurt to be proactive, you know? Um, so, I actually, I'll show you my fuel system here. So, um, the, let me flip, I'll flip my camera around and show you. Let's see here. You can see there I got uh, AN line hooked up i got an an adapter on the fuel line and then i got a uh, fuel pressure sensor right there and then another an adapter on the end of it and then the an hose um comes out the back right there so you can't even see it um and then it's got a heat shield on it um to go the length of the engine and then it just dips right down into here um all of this is going to be gone. Um, so, and it runs behind my 12 volt wires. Again, it's shielded when it goes behind those. And then I used one of the supplied AN things just because. Um, and then the rest of the way back, there's actually a gap in between the the lines all the way back. So um, I just ran it. It looks like it belongs there. Um, I ran it with all the lines. Oh, I just realized that's upside down because I was upside down all the way back. And then, so that line goes from the engine bay, same line goes all the way back here to a 90 degree fitting into the Corvette uh, fuel filter and regulator. And then I got my two hand lines coming off of that. Um, going into my Walbro 255. Uh, or no, Walbro 340, uh, I believe. Um, when it's at 13, or when it's at 14 volts, it, it pumps 340, so. Um, and then I got my AN adapters here. They didn't make a, I could, Evil Energy didn't make a quarter inch one, so I ended up having to get this one. It was like called K motor, I guess, cause Honda's got tinier fuel lines, um, cause this return line's quarter inch. Uh, the only thing I haven't hooked up that I'm supposed to is just the thing to the charcoal canister. Um, oh, I'm glad I came back here. I do have to, I just got to plug these in. Uh, 
down, I'll clean those, and then, and then, I'm back here, I got my battery, I don't have it mounted yet, but, um, I have all my, um, wires ran, let me see if I can, uh, you see I got my 12 volt here, zero gauge, and then, um, my grounds, this carpet's nasty, um, and then over here, I had the green wire that's on that harness that's up under the dash. It came with an extra 10 feet. So I just ran it all the way back here to the inertia switch. Um, and then let me show you what else I've done here. Um, all right. So from here, um, this is that 12 volt wire that runs to the trunk. Um, so the fuse box I have up in here, along with my OBD2, um, I take I do have to wire up one more thing before it's like ready to drive. Drive. I have to wire up the uh, v vehicle speed uh, sensor. Um, so VSSN, and then um, the ground. I think I have to run. Um, to those, um, to the speed sensor on the transmission. Um, but uh, I got my ground right here. It goes to the fuse. The fuse is mounted right here. And then this wire comes straight down. Or no, sorry, yeah. Um, this ground um, just goes to the ground wire that's on the harness. Um, you can see it right here. It runs back behind here and connects to this red wire um, and then connects here. And then my 12 volt wire, I um, like I like shaved all the rubber off of all around it and then I soldered this together and taped it up. And uh, so off of my main 12 volt wire, I got this 12 volt coming up into this fuse. The other side of this fuse goes into the goes to the fuse box. Um, so yeah, and then of course you got this side. Oh, there's my flashlight. I was looking for that. You got this side. Um, our so I've got my the red and green right there. The one on the left is your ignition. I got it ran to a, a wire that's hot for start and run and then the red and blue wire is the starter switch it's ran to the pink and white wire um and then that that pink wire that's hanging there you don't use and that yellow wire yellow and tan wire you don't use and then we got gas pedal and clutch bottom button um so we're not going to use the clutch bottom button because we're keeping the 4.6 ignition system and it's got a clutch bottom button um if it ends up needing that signal, I'll plug a, the button up and just bottom the button out and tape it up. Um, but yeah, I have everything hooked up, everything ready to go. So um, it's one in the morning, but I'm gonna give it a test hit and uh, just turn it over, let it start and then kill it real quick. Um, hopefully everything goes smooth. So wish me luck. All right, so there goes nothing. Fuel pump primed. It turned over. The fuel pump only primed for a second though. Like it said in the control pack. That's um when you wire this thing up that the fuel pump will run at all times um when you have the key on but mine didn't it just primed like it always used to isn't that weird i just when my finger's not laying on that the dinger went off um maybe it's because i i wired it differently than uh the cj's pony parts video did to prime the fuel a few times. As a matter of fact, I need to make sure it ain't spraying gas everywhere. I hear it 
hissing, but I've also never had the tank dropped while I did this. That leaks in the back. Let me check the engine bay, make sure I'm not spraying gas everywhere. No leaks up there, and I've primed the fuel like four times, but it for some reason my fuel pressure is not reading anything when the car is not running. I guess none of my gauges do. I forgot my all right, my battery gauge is working. My oil pressure, I'm showing oil pressure with my key on. How weird is that? The engine's not running and I have oil pressure, so. All right, let's give it a test tip. It's gonna be so loud. It's gonna knock stuff off my shelves. Please work. I figured that would happen. I looked everywhere except the fuel first because i thought for sure the fuel was fine and uh, i accidentally flipped the feed and the return from the pump to the filter so the pump was just pressurizing that line and couldn't pump anything else and then i was sitting back here connecting my fuel pump to the battery so i could run run it constantly so i could check the fuel pressure and i was like wait i should be reading fuel pressure right now and i went up and i unhooked the line and it was dry i was like what so i ran back to the back and flipped the lines got in the car as soon as i hit the key it fired up and it, it's 4 a.m so my neighborhood's awake um, but it, i turned it off within a split second so I did it, thank God. Um, the car runs. I'll let you guys hear it tomorrow. I'm not starting it again, it's 4 a.m. So, oh, look at how, uh, I think I already showed it in a minute ago, but my intake looks dope. All right, so last night, I got it to fire, but I turned it off immediately. So, um, I didn't even like let it idle. Um, cause it, I mean, it doesn't even have coolant in it. I just wanted to make sure that it was going to fire. So I'm going to actually let it idle for like maybe 10 or 15 seconds to make sure that my attack is working. And, um, that the idle sounds good and then i guess i'm gonna get to getting this thing back together um i'm waiting on a uh, adapter pipe for my lower radiator hose um because i'm gonna put a uh, an actual digital coolant temp sensor in it because i have these this gauge pod here and it's got uh uh, oil pressure, fuel pressure, and then boost, but I don't have boost anymore. So I'm gonna pull the boost gauge and put a water temp gauge there. Um, and I just gotta wait on that little pipe um, because I don't wanna fill it up with coolant today and then get the pipe tomorrow and then drain the coolant and put the pipe in because I, I used to do 
dumb stuff like that, but I just don't feel like getting coolant all over me and my garage and everything. But without further ado, I'm gonna start this thing for a few seconds. And my fuel system only primes for three seconds. They say the Coyote Swap will make it run all, at all times. Mine still does it just like when it was factory. So I don't have to sit there and listen to the fuel pump running.